Today here on RumbleStrip.net and 10 Minute Test Drive, we're delving into three row crossovers. It's Mazda's entry into it. It is the CX-9. This is the Touring Edition. So according to Mazda, driving matters, and of course it does. But does that translate into a three-row family crossover vehicle? TLDR? Kind of. Yeah. Uh, of all of the uh, mid to larger size crossovers we've driven the last 12 to 18 months for driving dynamics, not speed and stuff like that, but just driving dynamics, this one is pretty solid. Uh, it does not feel like a soft truckster. It feels like a competent uh, German sedan, for the lack of a better term. It's good. It has some issues. And um, let's just talk about those issues right off the hit. One of the first things we've noticed with the CX-9 is that the floor in the back is quite high. It's, um, it seems much higher than it probably should be, uh, and it takes away a decent chunk of cargo space. Hopefully we can roll in a, a photo of just how high that load floor is. Now, maybe that doesn't matter to you. For us, it kind of does, um, just load heights and uh, the amount of space that you kind of lose with in height inside the vehicle. Being three rows, uh, when the third row is up, there's essentially no space behind the third row. In fact, the headrests for the third row almost touch the back window of, of the rear glass. Once you fold all three rows down, uh, as the British say, mind the gap, because there is a pretty substantial gap between uh, the, when, the, when, the, when you have the third row folded down and then when you fold the second row down, there's a gap of you know a good three, four inches. Now, the reason that matters is if you carry your pets in the back, that's, a, you know, and if you say you throw a blanket down so you don't, you know, try to avoid some dog hair getting in your car, you're not going to avoid all of it, but whatever. Um, you know, if you put a blanket over there or something to cover it and they step there, they their paws could fall right through. It's, it's a pretty decent sized gap. Um, the sunroof. Pretty much everyone has a large, you know, multi-panoramic, glass sunroof. This one feels right out of 1985. It's not bad, but compared to what everyone else has, eh, if that doesn't matter to you, then it doesn't matter to you. I'm not thrilled with uh, uh, nitpicking the center console. You want to get in here? Okay, you can kind of get in here, but it's got this split fold thing going on here, and you kind of got to get both of them up there, and then it's kind of to reach in. It's a little awkward, so like you can yeah, okay, I guess it's not bad, but whatever. It's not our favorite. And finally, the infotainment system. Mazda has never been our favorite system for the, uh, the UI and the UX. And this one is slow. Uh, I don't know if it's, you know, sample size of one here, but oftentimes it's laggy like, you know, 1994 computer kind of laggy. Uh, it needs a serious processor upgrade. Uh, and that's no joke. It's just, yeah. And then the interface, yeah, well, if you've followed the channel or if you want to see some of our other Mazda reviews, uh, we'll put a card up or something there. And and you can see, and, and it's, a, it's a constant for us, is they really need to spend some time upgrading the infotainment, or at least, if nothing else, the processor, because all of them are not the best. And just the, you, you know, maybe if you live with it for a couple weeks, it's fine, but it's one thing that, you know, half a dozen Mazdas into reviewing or more than that, still don't like it. 
This is powered by a 2.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder. And let's check the facts here, just cause you know, you keyboard commandos will be mad if I don't get this properly correct. Uh, it's 227 horsepower and some amount of torque. We'll fill it in your driving. Don't feel like trying to read and drive at the same time right now. It's adequate, right? It's, it's fine. This, you know, the automatic transmission in here is, you know, does the job it, it needs to do. It's nothing special. Uh, as most modern transmissions do, it upshifts as quickly as possible, kind of leaves you lagging a little bit. But you flip the button here into sport, changes everything. Uh, just because we own a Ford product uh, in the family, I kind of, rather than just this little toggle switch here to flip sport on and off, it might be better to take a, uh, a page out of the old owner's uh, that being Ford's notebook, and have one more spot back from drive. Just go drive and then one farther back to the sport. That's how Ford does it. Kind of like it. I kind of prefer it. Whatever. Manual, yes, you have it. There are no flappy paddles on here. Why you'd put this into manual mode? It's not going to go carve canyons. It's not. It'll feel better than, you know, some generic marshmallow vehicle if you do, but it, it's not meant for carving the canyons. It probably could do an okay job, but whatever. So, other amenities. Interior in this is pretty good. Um, we're sometimes a little harsh on Mazda for reasons. Uh, the quality, the, the, the design of the interior is fine. It's actually very good, very well laid out. The materials is usually where we have the issue with Mazdas. And this one is okay. It's not maybe exactly what we'd want in a 40... $3,170 vehicle, but it's okay. It's certainly um, on par with some other ones that we've driven in the category, but you know, if you need to stand out, you need to do something different, at least from our point of view. You need to do things better, uh, and seeing as how most people will spend most of their time inside the vehicle, that's really where you need to pay as much attention as possible. Room in the second row is fine. Uh, no problems finding a, a comfortable seating position. Uh, the seats do go back and, you know, there is some travel back and forth in there, so you can find leg room. And I guess you could create uh, leg room for the third row, which there really isn't none, and there really isn't none. Eh, don't I sound college educated on that? So the... The seating in the third row is extremely limited, as you'd expect. Uh, it's meant mostly for little kids and car seats and things like that. Full-size adult, probably not a good idea back there. Could you do it in a pinch? Sure. Two other things to talk about with the interior. Uh, one, seats are heated, not cooled. Okay, maybe, but so many vehicles uh, well under this price point can give you cold seats these days. It seems like a bit of an omission. Bose sound system is what you'd expect from Bose. No highs, no lows, must be Bose. Yeah, okay, this one's a little better than that. Uh, there are lows, the highs are tinny, but we're particular on car sound. You probably, you know, most people won't care, but just as a data point for you. So can we recommend the Mazda CX-9? Absolutely. For three-row family truckster, it offers reasonable value for money. It's good. It drives well. It's comfortable. It's quiet. Uh, ingress, egress is fine. Yes, we still have the issues we have with uh, cargo room and cargo capacity, floor height, things like that. Little niggling things probably we could live with if it was ours. We've mentioned the downsides. You saw that right from the start. But overall, it's it's good. Um, it would go high on our recommended list because it does drive and ride so well. So many other vehicles are becoming overly cushy. Uh, this one is firm without being harsh. And that's a rarity these days. So it does roll in with Mazda's philosophy of driving matters. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, like, share, subscribe, 
and we'll see you next time on rumblestrip.net and 10-Minute Test Drive.